Hi, this is Synth Chaser with SynthChaser.com. Today I'm going to show you the ARP Omni. This is the ARP Omni 1 string synthesizer from 1976 and 1977. Uh, this was preceded by the ARP String Ensemble, which has uh, the string section of the ARP Omni, uh, but not, the, uh, not the, the polyphonic synthesizer section. This ARP String Ensemble was actually the Solina String Ensemble, manufactured by the Eminent Organ Company in Holland and then just rebrand, repackaged as the uh, ARP String Ensemble. And I guess around 1976, Alan Perlman wised up and said, hey, we can just copy this thing and, and, uh, and, and cut, cut the Eminent Organ Company out of the loop. And that's what they did with the ARP Omni. Uh, later, this changed into the ARP Omni 2, which had a slightly different synthesizer bass section. And uh, eventually all those pieces were merged in with uh, the ARP Solus monophonic uh, synthesizer uh, into the ARP Quadra, which is a huge 61 key keyboard. But this is the, uh, the ARP Omni 1, and uh, I'm going to run you through the functionality and sounds that you can get out of this. So with these controls that are in the green boxes here, you have an ARP string ensemble. It's essentially the same thing. You have the violin sound. You have the viola sound, the cello, which is a monophonic bass sound, and it plays on the lower 20 keys of the keyboard. And you have the lower bass sound. You can control the attack and release. Uh, so this is a quick attack. Uh, of course, I have to select a, a voice. There's a really long attack. And uh, you can control the release. So when I let go of the keys, the sound immediately stops. As I add release, uh, the strings linger for a little bit. Um, this is so essentially this is your model one string ensemble. Later string ensembles had a little red button down here, which is the same thing as this. This is the chorus phaser. This turns on and off the chorus phaser effect of the synthesizer. So you can hear it sounds different. This is a more lush string sound. This you can hear more of the phasing effect. The ARP Omni adds this waveform enhancement. On the ARP Omni 2, it's called the hollow waveform, uh, which allows you to get a different sound than you could have with, this, with the string ensemble. Basically, the uh, waveform of the string ensemble is a sawtooth wave. This waveform enhancement allows the sawtooth wave to go a little bit negative and then clips it off. So it gives it kind of a mix of a square and a saw sound like this. And this is with it off. What the ARP Omni adds that the string ensemble didn't have is a synthesizer section. Uh, the synthesizer section can be run through an ADSR and a voltage controlled filter. And you can get some uh, more interesting sounds out of it than just, just the string sounds that you could with the string ensemble. The uh, Omni has a four foot polyphonic synthesizer section, an eight foot polyphonic synthesizer section, an 8-foot monophonic synthesizer bass section and a 16-foot monophonic synthesizer bass section. Here's the 4-foot uh, sound, the 8-foot polyphonic, the 8-foot polyphonic ba uh, monophonic bass, and the 16-foot monophonic bass. The uh, ARP Omni 1 is different from the ARP Omni 2 in that the uh, synthesizer bass section um, on the Omni 1 does use the VCF and, and ADSR, whereas on the Omni 2 it's, uh, it's got its own dedicated bass voicing board and uh, as a result it doesn't, the synthesizer bass in my opinion doesn't sound as good on the Omni 2 as the Omni 1. I'm sure people are going to roast me in the comments on that, but that's okay. So the synthesizer section can be run through the voltage controlled filter and the ADSR. Uh, so right now I'm having the, uh, the ADSR envelope control the opening and closing of the voltage controlled filter. 
and I have the frequency and resonance turned all the way down. So I kind of have a very dull uh, synthesizer sound. And you can hear as I open... I open the filter up, it gets a little brighter. Uh, there's modification that can be done to the filter of the ARP Omni 1 and the ARP Omni 2 to raise the cutoff frequency. Uh, this one has the original frequency response still. Uh, so you can hear as I get closer to the top of the frequency, the, 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 the filter doesn't really open much more. Really, most of the action is in this lower half. Uh, there's also resonance uh, control, so uh, I'll, I'll sweep the resonance at various uh, frequencies of the filter. And when you do the uh, filter enhancement, you can get different sounds out of that. Uh, it's, it's a noticeably different sound when you modify the filter. Uh, so the ADSR, you can affect the, uh, the parameters of the, uh, of the filter. So like, you can hear the attack becoming more pronounced. You the release. Uh, going away. The release for the uh, actual note itself is still controlled by, by this release slider. Um, you can uh, select the amount of the ADSR that you want to apply to the filter. And there's an LFO that you can add into the mix. And the LFO speed is controlled here. Also, you have the ability to uh, control the mix. So there's a slider here that shows the mix, and it's uh, right now I have a dead center between synthesizer and string, but you can control you know, which shows up more heavily in the mix. Until you find the balance that you like. Also for the bass, Can control how much of that bass gets into the uh, into the mix. Putting everything together, we can actually get quite a big sound out of this. The ARP Omni and the ARP Omni 2 were ARP's biggest selling line of synthesizers. But despite this, there's actually very few of them still around working today. Uh, and that's because the amount of time that needs to go into the, uh, to the restoration and, uh, and overhaul of these keyboards is, uh, is prohibitive to most people. Uh, there's over a hundred polarized capacitors in, in each ARP Omni. Uh, that's aluminum electrolytic and tantalum capacitors. The aluminum electrolytic capacitors of a 40-year-old synthesizer have long since dried out and they cause problems like excessive ripple in the power supply which can damage uh, other components inside. Uh, the tantalum capacitors that ARP used were really low quality to begin with and they're very prone to shorting out which fries other circuitry inside these keyboards. Um, very often when I'm working on an ARP Omni or Omni 2 I see burned up parts inside due to shorted tantalum capacitors. So in order to get these working reliably, you have to recap and replace all of those capacitors. So in the ARP Omni 1, in this ARP Omni 1, I replaced 108 tantalum and aluminum electrolytic capacitors. So this kind of, uh, of overhaul requires a lot of time and um, you know it would be an expensive proposition for, for most owners of these keyboards and most people don't don't do that and then the synthesizer stops working and it winds up being thrown away or used for parts or, or something like that. Um, the, uh, the, it's an expensive proposition to overhaul one of these relative to the value of the keyboard and that's why 
very few people, except people like me who are passionate about ARP synthesizers, you know, take the time to do that to these. Uh, with this one, I also have a LED slider kit that I created for specifically for the ARP Omni that I installed in this keyboard that replaces the uh, old scratchy sliders. You can disassemble them and clean them, um, and uh, it takes that still takes a long time. But the net result is you're still kind of got a cheap old uh, 1970s slider. These sliders, you know, they, they look cooler and they're way more precise and smooth and, and they're brand new. So I, I like to put those in the synthesizers that I restore. And then for this one, I also rebuilt the keyboard. I changed the bushings and leveled the key bed. I, I gave the keys a, a bath in soapy water and cleaned them up. So, uh, you know, it's been fully overhauled. It, it was quite an investment of time. Um, and, and again, that's why you don't see that many of these uh, around in, in, in working condition like this. Uh, this particular keyboard is for sale. By the time you come along and watch this video, it may have been sold. But if you're interested in an ARP Omni or ARP Omni 2, um, you know, get in touch with me. Visit me on my website, synthchaser.com. I have uh, a lot more um, Omnis that I can, can restore and customize to your specifications. Um, if you have any questions about the ARP Omni or, or, uh, or other vintage synthesizers, please feel free to post in the comments or visit me on my website, synthchaser.com. And again, thanks for watching and have a nice day.